Hi, in one of the earlier videos, we basically saw how we could take a very healthy liver and we kind of gave it an effect with materials that it was a diseased liver. We also saw how we could animate that effect. Now you could do a lot more things with this file. You could sew a lot more uh, diseases with this file. This is a very, very nicely modeled file and very, very detailed file. So let's say for example, if I wanted to show the skin changing color because uh, the person has jaundice or something, so the skin going to like a yellowish, uh, you know, uh, tint or a yellowish color, we can pretty nicely do that. So what I'm gonna do right now is hide all the other layers other than the skin system layer. So I'll quickly go here and say layers, set all layers to invisible and simply get back my skin system layer. Then I'll go to Window Rendering Editors Hypershade right here. And once my hypershade opens up, I'm quickly going to select the skin right here and click on this button over here, which is Graph Materials on Selected Object. So my skin system graph material graph shows up over here. So right now I just want to want to watch the bottom section to get more space. So I'm going to click on this button right here. So you can see this is a pretty nice uh, detailed graph right here. So I've got a noise material over here, a noise over here, going to the bump right here. Uh, I've got a ramp, I've got a RGB to HSV node and so on. And the main material is the mental ray, you know, fast skin shader. So if I double click on this, it opens in the attribute editor. And let's quickly go and uh, render this. And you can see that there's also a subsurface scattering um, layer right here. So there's a nice little rollout with the epidermal, subdermal, and the backscatter layers. So all the different skin layers. So let's quickly render this. And uh, again, it's always a good idea to hide things you don't need to see or you're not working on right now. So right now the file's rendering. It looks pretty nice, very nicely textured. And uh, it rendered at 15 seconds on my machine. So right now I'm gonna keep this by clicking on this button, I'm gonna keep this image within the render window. And I'm simply gonna go here to my backscatter color. So let's take this down slightly. And it's at almost 85%. Maybe we can take this one right over here. And since I've collapsed my um, resolution right now for my video for recording the video, this is not going there. But that's fine, we can still see the model pretty nicely over here. So I'm gonna affect the epidermal scatter color in this case. So let's go to this little swatch and I've got a lot of stored colors over here. So I'm going to use one of the yellows. That's a little too deep, but let's see what that does um, to our file right here. So let's quickly render this one more time. You can see it's definitely uh, got that tint right there of yellow. And I can also change the subdermal and also the backscatter and right now if I save this image and check this with the earlier one, you can see there's a big, big difference. So the cool thing is I can also animate this value pretty easily. So if I just undo this once and maybe hit Z to undo it a few times, let's go back and select the skin system. And this is my scatter color. So I can pretty nicely go to one of my frames. So let's say if I wanted to show it, let me quickly unhide my time slider over here. So let's also unhide my range slider and let's have it at 200 frames, let's say. And if I wanted to show that this is a normal skin right here, color, and it goes from normal skin to slowly to this kind of pale yellow, I can pretty nicely go to frame one right here and go to my epidermal scatter and I can say right click set key and I can go to frame 200 in this case and click on this and click on yellow right here and right click set a key. Now, if you wanted to see the graph for this in the graph editor, I'll go to window animation editors, graph editor. Normally when you open, let me minimize this. Normally when you open the graph editor, you'll see that I'm not gonna be able to see anything because you have to select in Maya what you've animated. So I'll go back to my um, hypershade over here and I pretty much animated the epidermal color on this main uh, shader right here. So I'm gonna select it and when I select it, you can see that immediately my RGB values uh, show up over here. I'll hit A 
So that's my red, green, and blue value right here. And these are my keys. If I hit A one more time, you can see I can nicely see the graph. This is the value at um, for for red at frame zero. It's about 0 0.85, 884, and this is the value at frame 200. So that's my green value. Hit A again at frame zero, and this is my blue value right there. So I can pretty easily, again, and this is the blue coming down, it starts at like 0 0.531, and at 200 it's at 0 0.242. So I can pretty nicely change these values right here. So a very easy way to, or if you wanted to make sure that it doesn't go all the way to 200, I can just simply select these last keyframes and I can have them, let's say, at frame 150 and so on. So pretty easily you can, um, you can see that the keyframe smooth right here pretty easily. You can animate this and you can change, uh, show the skin changing color over time. So right now, if I go to frame, let's say 68 or 67, and if I do another render, you'll see kind of an in between between that yellow and the other, the earlier color. So give it a second right here. It's almost done rendering. And right now you can see that this is the full yellow. This is the normal color, this is the yellow, and this is kind of the in-between from that to that.